Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and it's not spawn year. It's day 24 of my comic review video day calendar and once again I'm here because hey I read a comic book, a comic I own. I don't know why I have this and that's why I picked it up and decided to thumb through it. I was like I don't collect this character, I've never read any of the series, I know next to nothing about this guy, but it was just, it was just in my collection. My comics breed like tribbles, like comics just show up everywhere, out of the woodwork in this house. It's very strange, uh, I thought they were printed by a company, but apparently they can reproduce. Anyway, this is Ghost Rider number 38, uh, look at this, uh, like somewhat water damaged issue of Ghost Rider that I have. I don't know where I got this. I don't know why I hung on to this. It was in a box that's not even filed yet. Like, I have a couple of short boxes of random comics that I've procured. Maybe this is just, that I haven't filed yet. Maybe this is just in a stack that was like between, sandwiched between a couple of issues because it's not even bagged and boarded. Like, I probably didn't mean to get this. Anyway, uh, it's got a really cool cover. It's got a nice provocative cover. Uh, it looks pretty exciting. You've got Ghost Rider with uh, the the pitchfork of Scarecrow. And yes, there are there is a Scarecrow at Marvel, just like there is DC, which I learned as a kid from Amalgam, from DC versus Marvel. I was like, oh, look, there's two Scarecrows. And they're like, palling around, being buddies. It was really funny. And I was like, who's... Rogue's Gallery has Scarecrow in it in Marvel. And I think I had a trading card of Scarecrow too. And I was like, I've never read anything where he shows up. I don't know what that is. And up until today, I didn't realize that he was a Ghost Rider villain. Maybe he shows up in other things too. Maybe he's not exclusively a Ghost Rider villain. I don't know. But anyway, so 1993, we're back in the early 90s again, and this one is written by Howard Mackey, who co-created this iteration of Ghost Rider. This is the second Ghost Rider, Danny Kitch, who I think is a lot of fans' favorite Ghost Rider over the original, over Johnny Blaze, and there's been others after that as well. There's one that rides around in a flaming car instead of a motorcycle. Uh, there's a Hispanic guy that I... I I think was uh, kind of big for a while at Marvel, and I think that's the one, I forget his name, and I think that's the one that was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was pretty good. The CGI in that was shockingly good for the, like, 15 seconds at a time they were able to put it on screen. But I actually enjoyed this quite a bit, and th this is not massively enticing me to read a ton of Ghost Rider or anything, but I would certainly look at uh, this this arc I. Uh, and, and uh, some of the issues in this series. I thought the art was pretty good. This is by Mike Manley, uh, who drew a lot of Batman in the early 90s around this period, just after Nightfall. He drew some of the Night's End stuff, and he also little-known fact, co-created uh, Darkhawk for Marvel, who was only slightly more popular than Nightwatch because he got 25 whole issues and I think has actually been adapted here and there in cartoon shows, although, from what I'm reading, only in non-speaking roles. And this guy drew lots of DC and Marvel around this period up through uh, late 90s into the 2000s and some Cartoon Network stuff too including Dexter's Laboratory and Powerpuff Girls uh, Samurai Jack he even drew one issue of Star Trek The Next Generation apparently so he's prolific and I think we actually already covered an issue with him because uh, his name popped up in Google when I was searching him like I've looked him up recently and I couldn't figure out what issue I've reviewed that he drew, but I think, but it must have been something. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into the story here. Um, Danny Ketch is uh, a, a ghostwriter who is, uh, I assume, able to go back and forth between human form and ghostwriter form, although he doesn't do that at all this issue, and he kind of talks about it like he's lost his immortal soul or something, but he didn't make a deal with the devil, he just found a motorcycle, this is origin stuff, I, I did five seconds of cursory research before this review, so this doesn't happen in this issue and it's not recapped or anything, but this I did look up, uh, he finds a motorcycle and touches a, a, a sigil, I guess, and becomes Ghost Rider, 
and that happens after his sister has been put in a coma and is close to death, and now, by issue 38, she has recently died. Uh, and I think her name is uh, Barbara or something. What is what is her name? Uh, I'm I'm looking I'm looking this up. Uh, it is. Barbara, yes. Anyway, uh, she gets killed by blackout, and Ghost Rider is mourning her death and can't stop going to the cemetery where she's buried and opining, and he's got a lot of, I want to say internal monologue, but he's just talking to himself, a whole lot of uh, Shakespearean uh, diatribes, a lot of monologues in this. Uh, he's talking in a real uh, kind of heightened language, and it's a lot of fun to read. Uh, he's real eloquent, this ghostwriter. Now your true pain is about to begin, while mine is never-ending. The pain of being feared by those I seek to protect. Uh, this is one of those books that kind of analyzes itself on the page uh, through character dialogue, tells you what all the themes are, everything you're supposed to take from it. There's really not a lot I can bring to this, so I can uh, make observations and tell you what the story is about, but it's kind of doing all the review for me. It's kind of doing all the all, all the homework here for me, but uh, I will certainly tell you what I like and anything I don't like, and, you know, that's that's a review. That's the job. That That's, that's how we do it here. Uh, so... The idea is that uh, Ghost Rider is going up against a, a, another side of the coin kind of villain. Uh, a lot of real classic superhero uh, tropes here. I was very much at home with this story. Ghost Rider is, uh, is fighting Scarecrow, who is uh, the embodiment of fear, and sees himself as the same as Ghost Rider. He's one of these villains that keeps saying, I, we're, we are not too dislike uh, or too dissimilar. We, we, are, we are the same, you and I. And he says that because they both have an obsession with, a, uh, with an ideal, with a uh, kind of dark uh, idea or emotion. And so Scarecrow is all about fear, of course, because he's a scarecrow, but he's a little bit different than the Batman scarecrow in that he is finding people that are afraid. He's he's kind of like a, a real twisted serial killer where he is pretending like or uh, justifying things like he's doing you a favor when he kills you. He's releasing your fear, taking it away. And both he and Ghost Rider uh, are like are about fear in some way, but the difference is uh, Danny Ketch doesn't want to be, and Scarecrow fully embraces it. And he says, uh, we are we are very different. And this part he doesn't actually wholly break down, but it's really, it's really clear what he's talking about, uh, where Scarecrow says, we're the same because you're obsessed with vengeance and I'm obsessed with fear and the difference for Ghost Rider is again Scarecrow embraces that and I uh, Ghost Rider doesn't like that he is making people afraid uh, he saves this woman at the beginning of the issue who was involved in a carjacking and some uh, jerks break into her car and it's really funny, by the way, how this is worded uh, at at the beginning, and uh, just how how dated and uh, like right in the early '90s this is, because like you know I've heard the word carjacking lots of times. It, it, it wouldn't that doesn't really jump out at me, uh, but it says that that's uh, the latest word carjacking, the latest word to enter the English language via the media. Okay, so this is just like a real popular thing for criminals right now. They break into people's cars and they force the person uh, who has the vehicle to drive them around. And that's, that's what happens here. And so 
uh, these, these these kids like steal this woman's money and they buy alcohol and then they're drinking it in her back seat while she's driving them around and she's afraid they're going to kill them and she eventually escapes she's real proactive and she goes to the cemetery where Ghost Rider happens to be and she's like uh, before she sees him she's like ah, I've kind of you know made a dumb move here because I'm not going to find anybody to help me out in the middle of the night in a cemetery but in fact she does it's Ghost Rider but she is terrified of Ghost Rider because I mean just look at him he's got a, you know a flaming skull for a head he looks really cool when you're reading him in a comic book but if you ran into that in a cemetery in the middle of the night when carjackers are chasing you uh, you probably wouldn't be you know, as happy to see him. And so he's about vengeance and not justice, and he's breaking these guys' legs and, uh, you know, cracking bones left and right, and uh, he says, like I just read, uh, you don't uh, understand fear. You're not thinking about the fear of your victims. Uh, he's making a distinction between uh, temporary physical trauma and uh, ongoing mental anguish that you can cause people. And his dilemma is that he's doing the same thing to people and he can't help himself because vengeance is his mission. That's his, his lot in life. And he doesn't like the idea that he's not in control of his own faculties and that he too is a monster. Like, he has to, he, he has to look like a monster in order to fight evil, but he doesn't want to actually be a monster, but he's afraid that he is. And th again, this is very familiar. The, the, this, this, is, uh, this is Wolverine and lots of other uh, superheroes who uh, don't want to, uh, you know, cross a line and become the bad guys that they're fighting, but they, they find that they have to run up against it in order to fight evil. And in this case, uh, it's sort of a nature-nurture thing, uh, but it's also your, your human self versus the entity that you fused with. So there's kind of two, maybe, uh, sort of personalities clashing and uh, at play here. And it's hard to say how much of an identity issue this is supposed to be because I haven't read any more than just this issue. But the uh, argument between uh, him and Scarecrow is typical, but interesting enough. And I like that Scarecrow is the physical embodiment of the very thing that Ghost Rider uh, doesn't want to be but has to use. That was kind of my big takeaway from this. Uh, I really like the panel layouts in this issue. Uh, I like how uh, sometimes you get full page spreads. Uh, sometimes you get several panels on a page. You've got panels that uh, overlap. Uh, there's a lot of thought put into the overall layout and the, as I always say, the panels on a page that become a piece of art in and of itself as opposed to several pieces of art that are all thrown together on one page. These all look of a piece which I really appreciate. And it's got that 90s issue that I always complain about with uh, minimal backgrounds, uh, just gradients and uh, solid colors. And there's the very very rarely do you actually see details behind anybody, but what makes up for it is the dynamic action and uh, pretty solid looking uh, faces, I think. This is, again, I was, I was right at home here. I've read a lot of uh, Manly's Batman and and uh, also, because and, I think he, he drew 500, uh, which was the big reveal of I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's him. Uh, the big reveal with uh, with Asriel Batman uh, with with that with that Batman costume. Uh, and so like I I've always I uh, kind of liked his design work and uh, a lot of the the various guys that were drawing Batman right then look more or less like this. Uh, so I had to keep reminding myself that I wasn't looking at a Batman comic because Scarecrow is here and he kind of draws Scarecrow the way you would expect him to draw Scarecrow. Uh, and then there's also uh, an interesting dynamic with Ghost Rider and a female police officer uh, who is, and her name is escaping me, Stacy, I think. And she was friends with Barbara who has died and with Danny and she talks about how he's been elusive and he's around somewhere and again that makes me wonder uh, does Ghost Rider like in 
uh, you know, the, the first Ghost Rider movie, uh, when you get to daytime or whenever, does he stop uh, being Ghost Rider and looks like Danny Ketch again? Or is he right now, like, stuck in the skull phase? Because there's no discussion about that, so I, I wasn't sure. Uh, but he is hoping that they can remain allies and that and, and both of them are hoping that I uh, they're not gonna be at loggerheads and that he's not going to cross lines so that she is his enemy but I uh, where they find themselves not on the same side of the law but like he's brutalizing criminals uh, he's not doing things anything like by the book and so I imagine at some point that probably happens. Like, their goals are aligned here. And by the end, she actually saves him. She, she shoots Scarecrow. And I imagine he comes back later because there's a lot of talk about how he keeps coming back from the dead. There's some kind of uh, mad science, science shenanigans going on where he keeps getting resurrected uh, or saved from the brink of death. So I assume he's going to be okay after this. But she saves him and uh, is sympathetic to uh, his plight, but also uh, says, I hope that our obligations never wind up conflicting with one another. And there's some nice, uh, uh, like, beats and downtime in this issue. Like, it's solid, like, wall-to-wall -wall action much of the time, but then you get these nice dialogue exchanges, like here, where Ghost Rider turns, and if Stan Lee's writing this, he would have a line there. But... Uh, Mackie doesn't put any dialogue uh, on that uh, that panel. Uh, he, he doesn't have anything to say because he knows that that's going to happen, that they are going to be at loggerheads at some point, and just uh, rides off. And she says, if you turn out to be one of the bad guys, I will find some way to destroy you. Uh, again, this is a melodrama, and it's pretty good melodrama. Of course, it's a comic book we're going to, from, from this period and of this ilk, we're going to use that kind of language. I will destroy you! But I like the dramatic situation there that she saves him and hopes that she's not going to regret it. Uh, so yeah, this was interesting. Um, I enjoyed this one quite a bit and might take a look at uh, more Ghost Rider at some point. Uh, I never really, when I was a kid, cared much about this character. And I like, like I guess Spawn kind of uh, filled, kind of scratched that itch, kind of filled that the need for this kind of thing to me. Like, you, you read one Deal with the Devil story, uh, you've read them all, and this is in the category of sort of doing Spawn better than Spawn. Uh, on the other hand, I have heard from uh, some Ghost Rider fans in the past that Ghost Rider gets just as convoluted and sticky and confusing and breaks your brain as Spawn does. So, like, I don't have any plan to ever go back and read all of it, but uh, based on this issue, I would go back and take a look at this run, and one of my big takeaways from this was this would make a rockin' animated series. Uh, I would really like to see this stuff in particular adapted to screen and in a similar art style to this, too. I kind of wish that had happened in the 90s. I guess Ghost Rider popped up in some of the Marvel shows. I think he's in at least a Hulk episode, if memory serves. I don't, I don't know if he, if he shows up anyplace else. But anyway, uh, there's my two cents on Ghost Rider number 38 for anybody who's interested. Tomorrow is uh, our 25th episode, our 25th day, and I took a poll from Patreon and let you guys pick the issue, so I'll reveal tomorrow what that is. But thanks a bunch for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow. I was Captain Logan, and happy reading.